ever look around your neighborhood and think, what was here before all this was here? Welcome to Oak Ridge Acres in London, Ontario, Canada. Back in 1922, it wasn't even what people would consider part of London. In 1942, it was farmland, except for the bog, and a few homes by the Thames River. But after the Second World War, Mowbray Sifton led a family company to turn that farmland into a whole neighborhood, and then some. Not just streets and houses, but designed in advance with places to play, pray, shop, and learn. The first homeowners to move into this innovative mid-century subdivision are almost gone. It's time to tell their stories and reflect on the history of Oak Ridge Acres, Canada's first planned community. brings us here hey i'm scott uh more about me later on why this is a big deal day for me and thank you for tuning in i don't know how many people are going to join us uh, over the next half hour or so but i'm excited to have you when i announced quietly a few weeks ago on twitter and on the uh, acorn facebook group that i was starting this and i put out that trailer there i wasn't sure how it would go over i thought some people would like it but i didn't realize that more than a hundred of you have signed up to the email list at oakridgemovie.ca and I've had a dozen or more emails come in, uh, emailed direct to me that I haven't yet replied to. Um, I apologize for that. I have terrible email reply hygiene. But I hope this chat today uh, can get you talking, can start a conversation with the community. What I hope to do as a result of this is just spread the word, get people excited about it, find some folks who are uh, as thrilled about this idea as I am and start putting a bug in the ears of people who uh, might be good interview candidates and have good stories to tell. Um, and then after I'm done yapping today, we'll turn to the chat and see if uh, if you have any questions and what I can answer. And I hope to wrap it up in about half an hour if my battery allows. My battery that I had charged overnight, I plugged in, it lasted two minutes. Ah, so I have 40 minutes of charge in this battery, and then we'll see how it goes. So first off, um, wanted to acknowledge that Signals Multimedia and Oak Ridge Acres are located on the traditional lands of the Anish... Oh my goodness, I should have practiced this more. Anish... Anishinaabek, Haudenosaunee, Lenapewak, and Atawandaran peoples on lands connected with the London Township and Somber Treaties of 1796 and the Dish with One Spoon Covenant Wampum. I'm going to go back in this movie to the indigenous people and even earlier in terms of geologic time, not just human time. We're going to talk about all the humans that have ever occupied this uh, part of the world, and then some. Uh, but also go back to the glaciers that made the London uh, area the way it is. And what did that do to the landscape we have? It's not going to be a huge part, but this is all part of the story. This, I hope, will be more than a movie. Uh, the consumable in the end, the end product, I hope, will be a movie of maybe an hour, hour and a half long. Uh, but there will be a lot more material that I want people to have access to. I've already come across some great photographs, some cool maps, uh, some neat newspaper clippings, all things that I would love everybody to have access to, and not just as a shot in a movie. I would like to have uh, a lot of the interviews that I end up doing with people 
online for other people uh, to read. One thing that inspired me with that, I'll, I'll, think, I'll think of two here. One, there was a documentary I watched years ago about computer bulletin board systems. It's a very niche, nerdy snapshot of a very particular bit of 80s culture. But this guy just poured himself into it and ended up making a box set that was hours long that would only be of interest to people who are really interested in that stuff. Well, who's more interested in Oak Ridge Acres than the people who have lived here? Except perhaps the people who built it. And then I hope to return to, to that topic again soon. So we'll have interviews. We'll have the history. And I see more than one stream in the film. Because if it's... It, I would watch a movie that is just the actual history. Like, how did Oak Ridge Acres go from being wilderness or uh, small settlement or farmland to what we have now? How did we go from that to this? I'd watch a movie that's an hour long just about that. But I think it's a better movie when, um, when there's human stories in there. Of course, you know, the, the story of the construction is a human triumph, right? We, it was after the war, the economy was booming, um, and Mowbray Sifton said, we're going to do this, and what went into that? That's a human triumph itself, so that's the story. But the people, obviously, are the story. The people who moved here, the people who lived here, the people who had uh, their triumphs and tragedies in our neighborhood, um, the struggles that the neighborhood put up against other developments, despite having been the benefits of, or, or having been the beneficiaries of some visionary development in the past themselves. So there's a lot of stories there, but I don't want it to just be a history lesson. I want it to have feeling. And that is part of um, what I don't have a grasp on yet because I haven't spoken to the people. Uh, my neighbor across the street, uh, it was a large inspiration for me wanting to pursue this because I always, you know, say to friends, I think he's 150 years old. He's not. He's not. Uh, he's lived there since before the house was built. I think he uh, moved in before it was finished. And he told me stories about things that happened when the house was under construction. I think he was he's one of the last people to be in the house the whole time. And I thought, this this story has to be captured. Um, and I'm sure there are even more compelling stories. So I hope through this network of people that we're building here, we'll be able to find a lot of those stories. And they won't all end up in the, the final cut of the movie, right? Because there's only so much you can put in. But having an archive that will live on afterward is where I think this thing will provide a lot of value for the community for years to come. That if somebody wonders, what was on my property before this was my property? Or what did this street look like years ago? Or how did they come up with the name for this street? Or that looks like something used to be there. What used to be here? Like the kind of questions that I've been asking all the time. Anyone in the future who has questions like that, I want our effort here to enable them to go to a resource on the web and look it up. Here's the history. Here's a cool picture of your house that you didn't know. So I want to gather up everything I can from the community, all the history that people have, put it all in one bucket, curate it, and then dole out to people. Uh, as, I don't know who will be the caretaker of it in years to come. Another question to answer. Um, but I, I think it's going to be more than a movie, but in my mind, I'm referring to it as the movie or the Oak Ridge Project or uh, Oak Ridge Acres, Canada's first planned community. I'm going to go all over the map here because my notes are very loose. But this Canada's first planned community thing, I it was no accident that I called it that. In Sifton Properties materials, they refer to it as Canada's first planned community. Between you and me, I think it was Don Mills. But we'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out why the Siftons say it was them. We'll find out what other urban planners think. I think that could be a fun through line. Just go to, a, you know, a montage of all these different bigwigs weighing in with their opinions. You know, Don Mills. Don Mills. 
Hydrostone in Halifax. And then have the systems go, well, obviously it's Oak Ridge Acres. And then explain why. Um, what else? I've got a whole list of stuff I want to cover, but that might be boring to just go through that. Uh, so a movie, an archive. Yeah, um, there are going to be interviews that are not going to be uh, videotaped. I'm sure I'll do some pre-interviews with people. Those I could get transcripts of, and those could eventually be turned into a book, or the transcripts could go online if they need to be edited, whatever. Again, it's a bigger project than than just a film. So I hope to shoot uh, a lot of the in-the-community interviews this fall while we still have free light outside and the cheap showiness of nature with the beautiful trees in the background. Uh, one of the great selling points of this community is the mature trees. Let's we don't have to pay for them. It's 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 free. They're there. We just take to take pictures. Uh, shoot more experts through the winter. Then there's editing, and I would hope that we could have something to show next summer. And by next summer, fingers crossed, uh, COVID will be a distant memory, and we'll have access to uh, a movie theater. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great to get everybody from the community in a in a movie house? The curtains open, the big screen, and everybody's like, that's my house! It is my house! That's the turkey! That's the turkey that runs around our neighborhood! Okay, so who am I? Obviously, I'm an enthusiastic guy. Um, you might have seen me online. I don't, I, I don't make myself too visible. I don't try to call too much attention to myself. Uh, but if, if I'm going to be walking up to people with a microphone, you ought to know who I am. Uh, some might know me as the local video transfer guy. I take people's videotapes and convert them to digital. So if you've got old VHS tapes, camcorder tapes, whatever, I'm in the business of preserving memories. That's one thing I've been doing since uh, the, the plague came. Um, it's, people can drop off their tapes in the mailbox. I process them in the house. They get their thumb drive. It's great. I've got a dish full of... Little thumb drives we can put stuff on. I started my career uh, in 1994 at 680 News in Toronto. It's a radio station. It had recently converted from... I'm just going to get comfortable here. <sighs> recently got uh, converted from a top 40 hit station uh, to an all-news station. It was quite a big experiment. I was a young uh, radio TV student, uh, and I became part of the team that ended up taking the station to number one and won some awards there for radio reporting and stuff. 2005, moved to Halifax, Nova Scotia to launch a new radio station there, News 95.7. Uh, they launched three radio stations at once uh, on the FM dial, which was the first for Canada. So I helped train the people there. And I was a news anchor and a reporter and editor and all kinds of stuff. Um, and then, then we had to move to London. During the birth of our son in Halifax, it was discovered that my wife had cancer. They were doing the C-section, and they were putting everything back together after they took our son out, and they're like, this doesn't look right. And turned out she had ovarian cancer that had progressed pretty far. Um, when it came back after treatment, they said she had about a year, year and a half, two, maybe, uh, with really good innovative treatment. So... We moved back to uh, Ontario. My parents and sister uh, lived in Stratford. Her sisters lived in St. Thomas and London, and her parents were willing to move to London. So we came to London for her to live out her last time and knowing that I would need all the help I could in raising our son. We found this great house on Inverness Avenue, and it's been full of challenges. Uh, early on, we had some flooding, and uh, we weren't pleased with what the property inspector missed. And that got me on a bit of a, a hunt for what what is, what is this built in? What is our house built on quicksand? Was there a river that ran through this? Because I started hearing from other people that, oh yeah, basements around here flood. Why? So I started looking for old maps. Is there a river that goes through here? 
what do, what do you know about our old house? Who used to own this house? I didn't discover much. Uh, I didn't find any building permits for this house that we hadn't taken out ourselves. But it got me really going on that question of what was here before all this was here? And I think that's the driving curiosity um, that has been feeding this whole project. Amanda died five years ago yesterday. So today's a big day for me. I'm, I'm kind of taking a bit of a, a plunge here in this uh, project and doing it so publicly here. When I moved here, the job I took was uh, running a radio station here in London, a radio station that had some uh, some talent that had been there a very long time and was loved by a lot of people. And I was put in a position of uh, having to make some changes there. And the changes did not go over well with the existing audience. And then Donald Trump came along and the whole tone of people's interaction with the media got kind of ugly. And it really started getting to me. And I started not to like uh, my, my career anymore. I, I was exposed to mostly an angry side of London. Um, just, just I, I guess you can imagine. You've, you've probably been on Twitter. You've seen what goes on on social media. And you've seen how people who don't like the media really don't like the media. And being in the position of being, you know, like I'm the manager of a talk station uh, in the corporate-controlled liberal mainstream media. I'm the guy, they're t when they say, you know, hey, there's a conspiracy and this guy's holding his back and he's a jerk and all this. That's me that they're often talking about. So it eventually it got to me. And, 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 and if I may be frank, having to sit through listening to Donald Trump every day in its entirety, I, I just, I got tired of it one day and I got I started driving home thinking, what else can I do for a living? Uh, and around the same time, I started looking at aerial photos of Oak Ridge Acres. I started um, looking at historic pictures. I found the website historypin.com. And what do you know? I found a picture of my own house. The picture that uh, you might have seen on the email list and on the website of a bunch of people gathered at a back door. Uh, there's a guy with a case of cigarettes, I think. There's a guy with a case of 50 and it looks like they're having a party. In fact, the caption says that they're having a surprise party for so-and-so. I looked and I'm like, that's my house. Holy cow. Okay. And I love those before and after things. So I started looking at other pictures and I saw a neat picture of a guy, a shirtless guy on a bike after the rain um, down by uh, Riverside Public School on the backside of it by the Optimus Park. And I'm like, that's amazing. I need to go duplicate that picture. So it all started snowballing. Um, eventually, I left my career. I gave up the radio world and, and left that job and unemployed myself. And uh, decided I was going to make documentaries about people's lives. And legacy videos, uh, heirloom videos, I, I call them. You sit, down, you sit down, you tell your life story. I make a movie about you. And then the plague hit, and we all had to stay inside. And there's no way I could interview people, so that kind of got me stuck. I've been stuck. I feel like I've been stuck for a year and a half. And today, through you, I'm going to make my art, and it's going to serve the community well. So uh, through this project, I hope I will feel more at home in my own community. Because when I lived in Halifax, it's hard not to feel the soul of that city. There's so much history. It's right in front of your face. There's culture, there's music, there's all kinds of people, and even, it's, it's just nice. You, you, you feel life there. London, London's okay. I, I've, I've wondered from time to time, does London have a soul? And if it does, is it a nice soul or an ugly soul? I saw a lot of ugly, but I've seen nice here in Oak Ridge Acres. I have felt so, I don't know, just at home from time to time. I, and, and everybody I interact with here is is just incredible. They're just super cool people. 
the people across the street, the people next door on either side of me, everybody I've met has been great. Um, and I look forward to getting to know a lot of you much better. I hope through this project I will feel more at home here, more connected, and more able to ask for help. Uh, I usually, through my radio career, I learned how to do everything myself. Because when you're working in radio, from the time you're handed the story, go do this, to the time it appears on the air, is all you. And I got used to doing that, and I thought I could bring that to the TV world. But uh, in TV, they've traditionally had, you know, a lighting guy, a camera guy, a director, a sound guy. And if you're with the CBC, there's a French version of all those, too. Not anymore. That's how it used to be. Uh, I don't ask for help very often. It's hard for me. Uh, I like to do it all myself. But the further I dig into this project, the more I realize that even if I could do it all on my own, that would be bloody stupid. It won't, it won't be any fun, and the work won't be as good because there's stuff that I know other people can do better than me. And I usually get more out of helping other people do great work than I do doing adequate work all by myself. Now, we should go through the list of... Any, any questions right off the bat for, for anybody who's here? Because I've got lots to talk about here. Topic ideas. Okay. So I've brainstormed. I know what I know. I know what I don't know. But there's a lot of stuff that I don't know that I don't know. And that's where that's where the fun will be. But it scares me that I don't know it. Uh, I did some research at the library last week in the London room. And I found some stuff that I had never heard about. In fact, I haven't even been able to confirm elsewhere. Like, there were, in 1931, I think, uh, there was a, an account of a train derailment up uh, the bridge uh, over Wonderland Road there, back when it was uh, Hutton Road. It said that the 16 out of 50-some uh, rail cars derailed, and there was flaming gasoline spraying through the air and all this stuff. I can't find any record of that having happened anywhere on Rick on Wikipedia or anything. But what do you know? There's a news clipping about it. So there's going to be a lot of things to chase that come up that I didn't know were there. That's exciting. I'm going to hopefully hear from you. What else was there? So um, Oak Ridge Acres was a bold experiment in neighborhood building that took part uh, took place in London in 1950 when a developer set out to build schools and churches and retail and recreation and a whack of single-family housing all at once. A new generation is moving in, the, new, the older generation is moving out. We need to capture the stories of the older generation and tell the story so the next generation can be good stewards of uh, the subdivision. How do you like that? Uh, so what was here before this was here? We'll look at the geology that shaped the area. We'll look at the indigenous people uh, who were here. At this point, we know the names of of, of uh, some of the groups that were here. Were they here here? Or were they just like in the area? Or was there something archaeological that we can say, no, you know what? Oak Ridge Acres was like the hot place. Or was it? I, I don't know at this point. Is there an actual Oak Ridge? Is there like a ridge? Of Oaks? Why'd they pick this name? Because there's already an Oak Ridges up uh, Richmond Hill area. A look at the social climate in the 1950s that made this kind of development appealing. Why was a, com a planned community idea developed? Like, what made this model so appealing? Who was the first? Uh, if Canada's any indication of anything else, we do what the Americans did a few years ago. We see what they did, what worked, we bring it here. I think there's there's some history there. Uh, how did the Sifton get the land? Who did he get the land from? What were the deals involved? Did somebody have to approve it? Did Trump, did somebody stand in the way? Was there any controversy? Was it easy? How was the concept marketed to the people? How did people, um, how were people pitched on this idea of buying into a community? If I recall correctly, what I've learned so far is you paid per foot of frontage and then picked your own, picked your builder and then you got the house built. You basically bought the land and picked your builder and went from there. 
it'll be more interesting when I find out the true facts and have somebody who was there tell it. Uh, the construction. Anything go weird in the construction? I know it did. Uh, Graham across the street told me that the roof fell in here at some point, and an excavator or something fell into a hole in his garage. Oh, probably lots of great stories. Obstacles, surprises. Uh, the joke that was going around at the time was supposedly, uh, I don't remember the punchline, but it had something to do with somebody went into the subdivision and they're still there because the streets were all designed funny. Wow, that was a really lame joke, Scott. Um, churches, schools, shopping, dining. Who decided which churches were going to go where? Uh, was Were any cut? Um, have any changed over time? We know there have. There's the... The one up by the plaza that has the pizza pizza in it. It's not quite Oak Ridge Acres, actually. I will, I will have to narrow exactly what Oak Ridge Acres we're talking about. But, yeah. Um, dining. The bog. The bog is worth talking about. The bog, if you haven't been yet, you need to go. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's pretty amazing that we have it in our backyard. The trees. I found out about uh, a gypsy moth infestation from the early 80s. I found a news clipping about that. This is one we're having. It's not the first one. Of course. <laughs> Everything old is new again. Um, yeah, what tree issues? I want to have an arborist to talk about the trees in this neighborhood because they're pretty awesome. Uh, the street layout, it's a weird street layout. The street names, how did we get the street names? Uh, I'm sure there's a story behind Valletta Street. I'm sure a few people already know it. Um, into the 80s. What happened in the 80s? Generational turnover, local sports, local service groups. Uh, somebody from the Optimists has reached out to me if you're on the stream now. Hi, thank you. I want to get back to you. Uh, from my understanding, the Optimists have a great treasure trove of Oak Ridge history, and I want to uh, get in there and uh, document that as best I can. When I said earlier, I'm not sure who will be the caretakers of the archive when it's all over. Um, maybe the Optimist. Maybe perhaps we can strike up some kind of deal where in exchange for support, they get ownership of the archive at the end. I don't know. Uh, famous residents. Now that I think of it, famous restaurants. Where did people around here go out to eat over the years? Uh, plans for Oak Ridge that were never realized. Were there things that were going to happen here that never happened? I know that there was like a 20-year fight against... Uh, development of a multi-unit dwelling at Riverside and Wonderland. I have uh, 20 years of newspaper clippings show that the the residents here fought like hell to uh, stop them from building an apartment building there or a condo. I I, eh, I have to look into the details, but there, there's a nice plot there. Uh, profiles of homes, noteworthy homes. There's some cool looking houses here. I have not seen two houses that are exactly the same. I've looked everywhere I've gone, and I haven't gone everywhere in this neighborhood yet. I hope to. Uh, I've not seen a single house that has the exact same brick and layout of windows and everything as my house, and leads me to think that they're all a little bit different, which is cool, because you go to some neighborhoods, and it's like, all right, they have garage A, house B, garage A, house C, garage B, house A. It's... Uh, the future sidewalks. They're digging up my, uh, front lawn yesterday. So c c filming commenced yesterday when I took the brand new camera out and, uh, recorded them digging up, uh, Bianca and Ed's front lawn <laughs> and then mine. Um, revisiting Oak Ridge. I, I would love to get some former residents returned home for a look-see. Specifically, I would love to find... The people in that black and white picture of the party, I would love uh, that lady to come back and go through my house and say, that's where we did, and that over there was once a... That would be so cool. To the best of my knowledge, she's still alive. I've sent her a friend request on Facebook, and I've never heard back, but I think a few people might still be in touch with her. Uh, so that's what I've got so far. I'm open to more ideas, obviously. Some of that will have to be cut down. So what do I do next? I mean, really, what's next? Uh, I need a few things to get things rolling here. I want to get uh, as much material as I can from the community. I want people to find their home videos, especially uh, their home movies on film if you've got them. 
uh, photographs, slides, whatever, pictures and video of uh, the neighborhood through the years, especially the early years. What I the problem I'm having is how do I get that from you? Along with a release that says I can use it. So I need a lawyer to draft the document that says, I acknowledge that sending you this thing means you're going to put it in an archive and then I I won't have any say in what's going to happen to it. Legal stuff. But to cover my butt in case somebody else buys the movie after it's done and then they're going to demand that everything be cleared just to save trouble. So I want to... uh, see how we can automate the acquisition of that. So if you're a computer person and you know of some software or interface or app or website that does this, that that, uh, automates the collection of uh, media with that uh, form up front that I can do. I think you follow what I'm saying. If you know about that, please get in touch. So I need a lawyer. Uh, I probably need an accountant who knows about media stuff so we can set up properly the money stuff. Oh, the money. Okay. I hate to talk about the money, but the money is a real thing. I've put up about $10,000 so far of my own money uh, in this project. And I want to see it all the way through, but obviously I can't afford to do it for free and have it turn out well. I mean, there's a way I could, I'm sure I could do it for free, but it would take probably three years and not turn out that well. Or if I can get money, we can knock this thing out faster and it'll be awesome. Who am I getting? <laughs> Where's the money coming from? I don't know. There's a few different paths we can go. It seems like a natural for me to see Sifton come up and say, This is a story about our family legacy. This is uh, a service to the community that we constructed. This is like a a love letter to uh, our grandfather's project. And as they move forward with uh, more huge developments like West 5, this is a jewel in their crown. And I think uh, a nice look back on uh, this great achievement would suit them well. So if they want to come forward and say, hey, here's $100,000 to make this for us. I would sit down and have a chat with them. I don't have nice clothes to wear. I'll probably wear my T-shirt about Never Forget, with the videotapes and everything. Um, There are, I I suppose I could go uh, knocking on doors looking for sponsors. I don't know if uh, Western might, Western's history department might have grants or... uh, hit up the local pizza place for a mention in the credits. I don't know. The last thing I want to do is turn to the community to fund it because I'm already, and I don't mean this in a way that makes me sound bad, but I'm already going to be exploiting the community to create this art. So, and I don't, I don't want to turn to them to say, and now pay me for it. If it were a case of money came from somewhere to make the thing and then uh, you could buy a DVD box set of it or Blu-ray or digital download, maybe. Or if it if it really comes down to it and I need to go, hey, uh, we need another 10000 to finish the last stage of editing uh, and people who commit this much money will get I don't know, some kind of bonus thing. Long way of saying, I haven't figured the money out yet. I'm not a film producer by trade, usually. I'm making myself one here. Uh, But for right now, it's at the community organizing and research stage, not at the writing big checks stage. I think I'm out of ideas for now. Uh, I think that's about what I wanted to cover. Is there more? Maybe, maybe. No, I left out on, I left off in my notes about how it would be stupid for me to try to do it all myself. So there are, uh, my big requests right now is I need to find, um, I need to find a lawyer who knows about media stuff. I need to find an accountant who knows about media stuff. 
I need everybody to start gathering. I'm sorry to keep hitting the microphone, I, and I apologize if it keeps making a noise. Um, I need everybody to go through their photo albums and their movies and their home videos and find the stuff that would that other people would like to see. And you never know what other people would like to see. Like a picture of your house from 1958 with no trees in the neighborhood. I'd love to see that. There's somebody who's going to there's somebody who's going to think that's their favorite picture. And you just think it's a snapshot. It's history. It's actual history. You have history in your house if you lived here and took pictures. So please gather them up. Um, what else can I show you? I got two more things I can show you here. Now, the the video that you saw in the trailer uh, came from me collecting a whole bunch of aerial photographs and then stitching them together and then mapping them in a, a GIS program, a mapping program, to geolocate everything in the image so it would line up with other maps. And I sent all that off to Indonesia where a man worked very hard to generate uh, something cool for me. I said, I, I said, I want this to blow people's minds. So here's what he first came up with. Oh, I can talk over this, I guess. So this is the demo draft, I think. Um, I don't know that the guy got initially what I was talking about because I wanted all the... In my mapping program, each of these layers lines up perfectly. So I want to have uh, sequences where we are flying over the streets that we know now, but what we see below us is a scene from, you know, 1922 or 1955 so that we can imagine what it used to look like. And I think there's going to be some way that we can augment that with drone footage. Because some of the software I've been looking at, I think I can plot a route in Google Earth uh, to, to simulate a camera flying over things and then output that so that it can go to a drone and then tell the drone do this in real life, like fly this path in real life. And then maybe I can overlay them. I don't want it to be like a TV Ontario documentary from 1950, sorry, 1984. I don't want it to be like so flat that you go, Oh, that's a Canadian movie. I want there to be some wow, but not so whiz bang that uh, it clashes with all the gray hair that I hope to have in the movie. So that's the guy's first draft, and then this is the, yeah, I don't know. I think that might be the wrong one. Demo final, demo draft. Oh, there we go. If I double-clicked, it works. Or maybe it doesn't. Anyway, back to me. Uh, if anybody has any questions in the chat, I'll be happy to engage with you. Otherwise, I'll send you back to your day. I've been talking for about 40 minutes, and I'm impressed as heck that my uh, my camera battery has survived this long. Well, then, um, I encourage everybody to sign up on the email list. Go to, where does it say on here? oakridgemovie.ca oakridgemovie.ca if you go to oakridgemovie.ca you'll see an option to sign up for the email list I don't spam it I don't send junk uh, I will send updates and we can establish communication if at some point this moves into a Facebook group or some other forum where there's more two way stuff I will tell everybody right now I have a hard time just keeping up with writing people back in the email so I apologize for that. I'm trying to get better. Um, I didn't write an ending for this. So thank you so much for joining me. Uh, my name is Scott Simpson. If you see me around town, give a wave. If I look a little shy, it's... I am. Um, and I'm terrible with names. I saw where my house was, says Judy. 
That's the whole idea. Th- like that's I I said to the the guy who was making the Whiz Bang Cool video. I want somebody who lives here or has lived here to look at this and go, "There's my house." <laughs> I wanted people to go, "Wow." It worked. It was worth it. Um, And then I found out how expensive computer graphics are. So uh, my next steps is I'm going to keep shooting stuff. I would like to practice using my new camera gear by shooting a movie about the turkey. This turkey, everybody knows about the turkey. What's his name? Tom? Terry? uh, Tony? Somebody said the other day? Ethan? No, Ethan's in chat. Um... I don't know the, the turkey's name, but it's around often enough that if I see it, I can probably grab the camera and uh, run. And I'm, I'm going to try and secure an interview with the turkey and uh, maybe a few locals who uh, have stories about the turkey and stitch that together to uh, maybe a little short film. Meantime, I'm going to keep working on this, keep researching, and heck, we'll see you on Facebook. Oh, while you're here, um, subscribe, would you? You don't have to. You don't have to. But if you subscribe, it's on here on Facebook. No, where are we? We're on YouTube today. YouTube. Subscribe, like. I'm embarrassed now. Thank you for joining me, and uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. I don't know if I have a goodbye. Do I have? No. No, it wasn't goodbye. My first stream, so 